Hi friends, very recently somebody asked me this question that Rahul, I want to invest 50,000 rupees every month into mutual funds. What would you recommend? My simple take was that, look mate, if you want to invest this money for less than three years of investment horizon, then go for debt mutual funds or hybrid mutual funds. But if you're looking to invest this money for more than three years of horizon, then equity mutual funds are your best friends. The next problem is that there are more than 20 plus equity mutual fund categories, then which ones are the best? And here is my basic and humble suggestion that please stick to four mutual fund categories. Number one is large cap mutual funds. Number two, flexi cap mutual funds. Number three is mid cap mutual funds. Number four is small cap mutual funds. Now I have not randomly picked up these four mutual fund categories. Let me now show you my rationale with some data. Let the data talk. First data point is about mid cap mutual funds and small cap mutual funds. Have a look at my screen and you will see I've listed their mutual funds that have given more than 25% SIP returns. Please note the word SIP returns and this video is all about investing into mutual funds every single month and we need to look at the mutual fund categories that have given us the best returns with a reasonable risk. If you look at this data, you will see that out of the 13 best performing mutual funds, Eight are small cap mutual fund categories and two are mid cap mutual funds. And if you look at the first one here, again, these are not the recommendations. Please wait. I will clarify each and everything in this video in a very, very simple manner. But look at this data and you will see that the first one has given close to 36% SIP returns. And that is huge in terms of the growth. So small cap mutual funds and mid cap mutual funds, they are the growth drivers to your mutual fund portfolio. How much to include in your portfolio? I'm again going to talk about it. But the reason I've included small cap mutual funds and mid cap mutual funds, because if you want to have growth in your mutual fund portfolio, you got to have mid cap mutual funds as well as small cap mutual funds. Let us move to point number two or data point number two, which is about large cap mutual funds. What you see on my screen is calendar wise returns four different types of equity mutual fund categories and very simply you will quickly see that large cap mutual funds have been the most consistent performer have been the least volatile mutual fund. So if you look at any year you will see that if they have not given you skyrocketed returns they have been giving you reasonable returns 10 to 12 percent on an average and they are not very volatile look at small cap mutual funds and mid cap mutual funds that is the problem with them they can be really really volatile and can actually erode your capital large cap mutual funds bring that stability it is the backbone of your mutual fund portfolio therefore everybody must include large cap mutual fund how much to include which ones to go for i am going to simplify in this video in the few minutes last point that i want to make is why am i talking about the flexi cap mutual fund so flexi cap mutual funds was a category that was in introduced in 2020 so it's a fairly new we do not have a lot of return data on the flexi cap mutual fund categories the data that you see is primarily because the mutual funds that were previously large cap mutual funds and got converted into flexi cap mutual funds the simple reason i want flexi cap mutual funds to be in our portfolio is because of the flexibility it provides to your mutual fund manager as per the SEBI law mutual fund manager can invest in large cap mid cap small cap in any proportion depending on the market size as long as that the total equity exposure remains up to 65 percent so depending on the market condition if the large cap stocks are going to perform better your mutual fund manager will move your money into large cap if the market is going to be conducive for small cap stocks then your mutual fund manager is going to go and buy small cap stocks on your behalf. Therefore, flexi cap mutual fund brings that flexibility into your portfolio. And that is the reason I've included into portfolio. Now comes the million dollar question that Rahul out of that 50,000 rupees per month, how much should I invest in large cap versus flexi cap versus mid cap versus small cap? Now here is a very simple framework that I want all of you to understand. Broadly, I divide the investors into three major buckets. Bucket number one is what I call is conservative investors. These are the investors, people like you and me who cannot see their portfolio drop by more than 10%. So for example, if their mutual fund portfolio is 1 lakh rupees, they cannot see that this 1 lakh rupees goes down by more than 90,000 rupees. So meaning they can take a loss of up to 10,000 rupees in a one particular year. But the moment their portfolio drops less than 90,000 rupees, they are going to have sleepless nights. I call them conservative investors and it is perfectly fine for us to be in that bucket. If you are into that bucket, then what my recommendation is that please consider investing 80% of your money into large cap mutual funds, 
10% in flexi cap mutual funds, 5% in mid cap mutual funds and 5% in small cap mutual funds because you do not want to witness a lot of volatility in your portfolio because that might completely chuck you out of the stock market and I do not want you to do that. Bucket number two is what I call is balanced investors, people who can see their portfolio go down by maximum 20% and after that they will start to have sleepless nights. So again the same example, if their portfolio is 1 lakh rupees then they can see that come down to maximum 80,000 rupees and that is their risk tolerance power. After that they are going to worry and they are going to exit the stock market. For those people my recommendation is put 50% into large cap mutual funds, 20% in flexi cap mutual funds, 20% in mid cap mutual funds and 10% in small cap mutual funds. And the third bucket is what I call is aggressive investors where the people like you and me can take can have extremely high risk tolerance and they can see the volatility up to more than 20%. So if their portfolio from 1 lakh rupees all of a sudden goes down to 50,000 rupees because of a bad market condition, they will still remain invested. And for such people, my recommendation is that you can invest 20% into large cap mutual funds, 20% in flexi cap mutual funds, 30% in mid cap mutual funds and remaining 30% in small cap mutual funds. Please let me know your comments on this particular framework that I am suggesting whether you like it or not. I would like to hear from you via your comments. Let us now try and understand what is our best options when it comes to investing in large cap mutual funds. So the first thing is that should you take active mutual fund route or should you go down to the passive mutual fund route and here is some data for us to consider have a look at this you will see that in the last five years in the large cap mutual funds category what has actually happened is that only 12 percent active mutual funds have been able to manage and beat the benchmark returns simply meaning that when it comes to investing in large cap mutual funds passive is the route to go not active route right Within passive again there are two choices for you one is go with the index mutual funds and second is go with the ETFs. Now there is a full video that I would need to create if I were to explain to you the differences between index and ETF and which one is better. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to create a full video on this topic and if I get considerable amount of comments then I would definitely create a video to clarify the differences between index and ETF. For now I am assuming that you are okay to consider index mutual funds for the purposes of this video. The second important thing about large cap mutual funds is that should you invest in top 50 stocks which is part of nifty 50 or should you consider investing in 51 to 100 which is nifty next 50 index or should you consider 1 to 100 which is nifty 100 mutual funds there are enough videos on this in fact i have created one video where i have categorically said no to nifty next 50 mutual funds i will never invest there the video is still out there some people liked it some people did not like it but it was my point of view i presented six points there Please go ahead and watch that video. My preference is always to invest in Nifty 50 mutual funds and therefore now comes the point which is the best index Nifty 50 mutual funds that we are going to now analyze. What you see on my screen is more than 3800 mutual funds and our job is to find out the best Nifty 50 index mutual fund. For that the first thing we are going to do is go into category and select the equity as a category. Within the equity we are only interested in index fund. Let us go ahead and select that. The second thing we are going to do is we are going to look at the plan and we only want the growth oriented ones. So let us go ahead and click that. That will give us total 98 mutual funds. The next thing we need to find out is which are the index mutual funds that are tracking nifty 50. So for that what we are going to do is add another filter called as benchmark. So let us go ahead and add benchmark in here. And within the benchmark let us go ahead and search for nifty 50 TRI. So we are going to get nifty 50 TRI. So we only want nifty 50 index mutual funds so we get total 19 nifty 50 index mutual funds the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to add expense ratio again very important in the cases of index mutual funds because we want to buy the cheapest index mutual fund let us go ahead and add expense ratio and the next thing that we also want to select is go ahead and select the tracking error again very important in cases of index mutual funds lower the tracking error better the index mutual fund is so let us go ahead and add that here and lastly we would also like to add the last three years average annual rolling returns so let us go ahead and add the rolling returns as well here so let us go ahead and add that here three year average annual rolling returns now the first thing is let us go ahead and sort this list by tracking error we want the lowest to come on the top so let us go ahead and add that in the top you see all these mutual funds the top three are the ones SBI nifty index fund UTI nifty 50 and Navi which are giving 0.02 as the tracking error the lowest possible 
But if you look at their expense ratio, again, there are mutual funds here which are giving 0.3 to expense ratio. Let us go ahead and filter out and only consider those index mutual funds that are giving expense ratio of less than 0.21 because we would not like to pay more than 0.20 in the index mutual fund. So that gives us total 13 index mutual funds. The next thing what we are going to do is only select those index mutual fund that I have got the least tracking error. So what I'm going to do is only select the top few seven of these index mutual funds. So let us go ahead and put a filter here which gives us the tracking error not more than 0.03. So let us go ahead and put that here that gives us these six index mutual funds now the question is which is the best out of these and if you look at the three year average rolling return you will see there is not much difference except motilal oswal that has given 23.74 but the key point here is that we are talking about investing money every single month which is the sip route let us go ahead and have a look at the sip returns of these six index mutual funds so if i go ahead and have a look at the sbi first and the sip returns if you look at it has given 43.57 if you look at the next is UTI. So if you go to the UTI, UTI has given 44.11%. Next one we are going to look at is Navi mutual funds. Navi has given 8.89% only from a SIP perspective. It started only two years back as a new mutual fund. And the next one is ICSA Pro that has given us 43.98%. And if we go back to HDFC, we are going to see HDFC has given 43.8%, 82%. And lastly, if you look at the Motilal Oswal, then Motilal Oswal has given roughly 31.86%. So I'm not going to recommend to you any single one, but I've presented all the facts in front of you. And I think you are smart enough to now pick the best index mutual fund for your investment. Now we also need to look at flexi cap mutual funds and the best performing small cap mutual funds and best performing mid cap mutual funds. But this video is getting really, really long now. And I do not want to do that because some of your feedback was that let us create small duration content, not more than 10 to 12 minutes. So I will keep to that spirit. But if you would like me to analyze and tell you the best flexi cap mutual funds, mid cap mutual funds, small cap mutual funds. Let me know in the comments that Rahul, we need part two of this video. Based on the number of comments, I would definitely consider creating a part two. So far, if you're liking this video, please hit the like button so that it reaches out to more and more people on YouTube. And I will see you in my next video. Keep rocking.